Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for this video. Today we're going to be talking about when to start fertilizing and mowing in your lawn. So spring is not arriving as quickly here where I'm located in central Iowa as I would like it to be. So hopefully where you're located things are getting started a little more quickly. but. It's kind of dragging its feet right now as far as spring goes, and the lawn's not doing a whole lot here, but I thought it'd be a good time to talk about some of the things going on with spring lawn care and what you need to do in the early spring. I've been getting some questions about fertilizing, about when to start mowing, things like that, so I thought I would make a video touching on those topics. I also recently made a video about soil temperatures, and some of those things can help us make some decisions, and if you're a little bit lawn nerdy like I am, then you might be interested in doing something like that, so check out that video. I'll have a link to it in the description if you'd like to know more about taking some temperatures in the soil. So first and foremost, you're probably eager to get out into the lawn and that's completely understandable, but when talking about fertilizing, there's one main important thing that we need to do first and that's make sure that the ground isn't frozen. So we don't want to be putting any fertilizer on the ground if it is frozen because it's not going to do any good. It's kind of a waste of money and also a waste of product that's probably going to get washed away into the sewer system. This is pretty easy to tell. Most people when they're walking on their lawn will be able to tell if it's frozen or not, at least for the first couple inches, but you can just poke something into the ground. If you have one of those thermometers like I used in my soil temp video, you can do it this way as well. But essentially just make sure that the ground is not frozen at least four to five inches down into the lawn. So then people have been asking me a lot about nitrogen in the spring and these are just my personal thoughts on it, but the things that I've done the last few years is tried to wake up the lawn naturally and slowly. And what I mean by that is that I don't put a whole lot of nitrogen down in the early spring. And the reason that I don't do this is because what you're going to have happen is the grass is just starting to kind of wake up. And if you really are forcing it to wake up with nitrogen, then you're gonna get a lot of the top growth that's happening. And you're not gonna get a lot of growth into the soil uh, where we need to start building those roots. So because of that, I don't do much in the early spring as far as nitrogen. If you wanted to, I'd probably just go with something a little bit less intense on nitrogen. However, this is also going off my lawn where I did proper fertilization in the fall and all of that. So if you didn't do anything in the fall, if you're just getting started now, you could do an early fertilizing in the spring, but just keep that in mind as the years go by and you start to build up and do the proper things in your yard that when you're adding a lot of fertilizer in the fall, this is the best time to do it for cool season grass, then it's gonna kinda of wake up naturally in the spring. You don't need to force it to do that. The other thing people have been asking me about is putting down malorganite and or putting down malorganite with fertilizer. So again, kinda of my same thoughts there as far as nitrogen goes, however, uh, Malorganite doesn't work quite as well in the early spring just from my experience. It kind of breaks down by microbe activity in the soil which doesn't happen as much at lower temperatures. So I don't tend to put any down until about Memorial Day time frame which is late May or so. And that seems to work well for me, however some people put it down earlier, they say that it works well for them. It all kind of just depends on your area and how quickly things warm up. So if you do happen to put it down right now, not really a big deal, it'll just sit in the soil there and it will just kind of sit there until it's ready to be broken down. Now putting it down with another fertilizer, again, I would just probably try to limit the amount of nitrogen as far as the synthetic fertilizer goes. So don't put down something too crazy and then also put down malorganite with it. But at the same time, if you already did that or if you were thinking about doing something like that, then just remember that malorganite's probably a little bit slower right now anyway, so you're probably gonna get the results from the synthetic first, the malorganite's gonna kinda sit there, and then over time that will start to break down slowly. Again, also look at your fertilizer, and hopefully there's some slow release in there as well, because if you put down something, what's called urea, or something that has a lot of just urea nitrogen in it, then that's gonna be the fast release stuff. So you're gonna get a real flush of growth for a week or two and then that kind of just backs off. And so we prefer for it to be a little bit more broad and kind of slow down a little bit when it comes to the nitrogen. Another option for a lower nitrogen fertilizer would be to use something like starter fertilizer. And most people think that this is only for when you're seeding. And it depends on some regulations in your area, so you might have to look at that. But if you want to build the root zone, then this is a good option as well. And for me, every pretty much every fall, I do some overseeding, or I have been for the last couple years. So in the spring, I usually put down a little bit of starter fertilizer again because that grass isn't even a year old, and we want to keep building it before we get to the summer months. So that's a good option because it has a little bit lower nitrogen content, so we're not trying to grow the grass too quickly, and I find that to be a good option for me. So 
So the reasoning, again, why you might not want to put down too much nitrogen in the spring moves us into what we're talking about on when to start mowing. The reason behind all that nitrogen talk that I just did is because we don't want to break the one-third rule as much as possible. And what that means is we don't want to cut off more than one-third of the grass blade at a time. If you're going to put down a lot of nitrogen in the spring, then you're going to get that flush of growth. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to follow this rule. Now, if you don't follow this rule all the time, it's not the end of the world. However, the grass plant is going to be the healthiest if we follow this rule, and it's going to have the least amount of stress when it comes to mowing. So what also happens when you put down all that nitrogen in the spring is you get that flush of growth, and also what happens in the spring, as most of you know, is it's typically a lot more rainy as far as where cool season grasses grow. And because of that, then you're going to get a lot of growth. Maybe a week goes by, you can't mow it, and it's five inches, six inches tall at that point, and you're going to want to lower it, but you can't mow, and you just run into all those things. So that's why, again, I try to wake up my grass a little bit more slowly so that we're not getting so much growth in the spring that we can't even keep up with the mowing. So when to start mowing is basically kind of up to you. The grass will tell you. Right now in my yard, you can tell the grass is kind of a little bit confused because it's getting a lot of sunlight or it's getting a lot of light in general for longer periods of time. But the temperatures aren't really getting to a point where it should be growing, so it's a little bit confused. I'm getting some green grass growing. And the other day I did a little bit of an experiment to mow just a few strips in my backyard. We have some cold weather coming up, so I wanted to kind of see how it's going to react to that to know what I can do in the rest of my yard. So I'd love to be out mowing. But right now, I'm holding off a little bit because of the weather forecast. And speaking of weather forecast, just for me, this is my personal opinion and things that I follow. But as far as weather goes, I kind of look at the weather forecast for the next 10 days. Do I see any low 20s in there? Do I see a lot of 20s in there as far as lows? And when I see that, I tend to not want to mow or go out and do a whole lot in the yard. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is just because of hard freezes still happening. And although I think it could probably survive those things fine, you know, there's golf courses and baseball fields and things like that that are already going in the springtime right now. So it could probably survive those things with mowing and doing those things. However, I'm just not trying to stress out my grass as much as possible right now. So it's up to you. Kind of look at your spring forecast and see what you prefer. But as far as the mowing goes, I don't like to do too much mowing when I'm seeing a lot of 20s for lows. Now as far as that first mowing goes, what I like to do a little bit if possible is cut just slightly lower than I normally would. You're going to have a lot of that brown dormant grass on top and the green blades are going to be underneath trying to get out of there. So if you cut that off a little bit lower, first off you're going to cut off a lot of that brown and so the green's going to emerge and look a little bit better. But secondly, you're also going to be getting a little bit more air, sunlight, all those things down into that new growing grass, which is a very good thing. If you can do that, that's kind of personal preference, but I just cut a little bit lower and that helps to get the green up of the grass going a little bit more quickly. I hope that covers some of the questions that you might have had. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.